I might uh, just grab your attention and start tonight's uh, proceedings. Um, can I, of course, start by uh, acknowledging the Ngunnawal people and the Ngambri people, the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Can I uh, acknowledge Amanda Rishworth, the Secretary of the Parliamentary Friends of Papua New Guinea, and Senator Anne McEwen, the Chair of the Parliamentary Friends of uh, Papua New Guinea, who, along with me, are the hosts of tonight's event. Um, in absentia at the moment, can I acknowledge uh, Harry Jenkins, the Speaker of the Parliament, who will be joining us a bit later, uh, the Parliamentary Secretary for Defence, David Feeney, the Parliamentary Secretary for the Treasury, uh, David Bradbury. Uh, again, I think joining us a little later, the, so in absentia at the moment, can I acknowledge the uh, Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs, Julie Bishop. Can I acknowledge all the members and senators who have come here to uh, join us in tonight's event. Um, there is always competition in this building, but the fact that we've had such a fantastic turnout amongst members and senators, I think, speaks volumes about the significance that people hold the relationship uh, with PNG in. And might I also say, Sarabi, I think it also says a lot about the high esteem with which people hold you. Um, can I acknowledge uh, Charles Lepani, His Excellency Charles Lepani, the uh, uh, PNG High Commissioner, uh, His Excellency Martin Dunn, the High Commissioner for New Zealand, uh, His Excellency Baraki Gino, uh, the uh, High Commissioner from the Solomon Islands, His Excellency Simi Lamalu, the High Commissioner from uh, Samoa, uh, and Taeli Falakava Kupu, the Charge d'Affaires from uh, Tonga. Uh, and of course, can I acknowledge our very special guest? I've just acknowledged you in absentia, Julie. Um, uh, can I acknowledge our very special guest here tonight, uh, our inaugural PNG Independence Day orator, uh, Sarabi <coughs> Namalu? And it is uh, a great pleasure to have you here this evening. Uh, I first went to Papua New Guinea uh, on a school excursion uh, back in 1984, uh, where I spent three weeks uh, travelling around, uh, travelling around PNG, not just stuck in Port Moresby, but going to uh, the highlands, hiking, uh, staying at uh, uh, with my Papua New Guinea contemporaries at uh, the Martyrs School in Papandeta. And I have to say that from that very first experience, for me, uh, it was love at first sight. Uh, Papua New Guinea is an amazing place. It is an utterly amazing place uh, with the cultures, with the different languages, with the different costumes, with the incredible beauty of the country. Life is simply lived in Papua New Guinea in a way that it is lived nowhere else on the planet. And it is, for that reason, a very special place indeed. And my trip was filled with magic. Magic in visiting a village which hadn't seen a European face for a few years. Magic in uh, spending the night in the boarding house at uh, the Marta School, which actually meant sleeping in a kind of hut with no walls outside and watching kind of wild pigs have a fight in front of me at midnight and my uh, PNG contemporary sleeping through the whole thing. Um, it is an incredible place. But of course, my story is nothing compared to uh, the so many Australians who have spent a very long period of time uh, in their lives in PNG. And that includes people such as Louise Marcus, who is here tonight, who has lived in Papua New Guinea. And it includes uh, Professor Ross Garno, who is with us here tonight. Um, I have been to PNG since then uh, in the guise of a, a lawyer, a union official, and now on a number of occasions as a member of this government. And I've always been a little curious as to how people in PNG view Australia. Uh, but without a shadow of doubt, I've always been met with an incredible warmth from uh, PNG uh, and from people in PNG about Australia. It's not a simple statement to make. There, are some, there is some texture to that. But by and large, my sense is that Australia is held in enormous regard by people in Papua New Guinea. And there's an incredible interest um, in Australia as well, uh, an interest in uh, current affairs, what's going on in politics, what's going on in sport. And for me, if there is one thing that I would like to see, it's that in a way in our national discourse that that interest is reciprocated, that the, we see a greater interest shown by people in Australia in what's happening in PNG. Because I do feel uh, that PNG's profile within our national discourse needs to be raised. 
And in saying that, I don't make that as, uh, as a criticism of uh, any government. In fact, I think that all governments since PNG's independence uh, have placed a very significant importance on the relationship with PNG. And you can see that in the fact that it is one of our two uh, big uh, bilateral recipients of development assistance. It's one of our largest overseas missions in the world. Uh, they are very important symbols which have existed over uh, governments of all persuasions in this country, which demonstrate the significance that a at a government level is placed upon the relationship with PNG. But if you consider those basic facts along with the, with the notion that PNG is, is an economy which is growing very rapidly nowadays in, in the last financial year at, at a rate of 9%, the fastest growing economy within the Pacific. Uh, that we, it has a population of 6.5 million now compared to 2.5 million at independence. It's a country 50% bigger than New Zealand. Uh, we now enjoy uh, $6 billion worth of two-way trade between Australia and PNG. And of course, uh, it is our closest neighbour. There are people living in the Western province who every day get up in the morning and commute across the border to the northernmost islands of the Torres Strait. Uh, for all these reasons, no matter how you cut it, uh, PNG has got to be in our top ten bilateral relationships, and the truth is it's probably much, much more significant than that, and yet I don't think that it plays like that at all within our national discourse. It certainly doesn't play like that within our media. And a good example of that to me is if you look at the, the tragedies of the summer that has just passed with the floods in uh, Queensland and Victoria, the fires in Western Australia, uh, the earthquake in Christchurch. Uh, in the midst of all that, in November and December last year, more than 250 people died in Daru, just across the border, in an outbreak of cholera, and yet who knew about that? it barely raised a ripple within our public discourse. And to me, that is a really good example of what needs to happen. And so for me, there is a bit of a passion in trying to raise the profile of our bilateral relationship with PNG um, in our national discourse. And I think there is no better place to start doing that than here uh, in this building. And that's very much part of the inspiration for having tonight's inaugural uh, PNG Independence Day oration. Uh, which is intended to provide PNG its day in this building, its day in this parliament. We all know that there are many uh, organisations, industry sectors, uh, sporting teams, even regional cities who have their day in this building. Well, PNG will now, from now on, have its day in this building as well. Uh, celebrated on a sitting day as close as possible to the 16th of September, which is, of course, the National Day of Papua New Guinea. And in doing that, it will be unique because there is no other country uh, in the world which will have its national day celebrated in this building each and every year. But there is an appropriateness to that uniqueness because, of course, in the journey to PNG's independence, it culminated by an act of this very parliament, uh, the Papua New Guinea Independence Act of 1975. Um, our first orator is Sarabi Namu. Uh, a former Prime Minister of PNG, uh, a former Speaker of the uh, PNG Parliament. Uh, I won't steal Amanda's thunder in doing the full introduction of Sarabi, which will happen later, but Sarabi talks to us at a time when we are seeing very significant generational change in PNG and where we are seeing PNG face the real challenge of whether or not it can leverage the, the current resources boom that it's experiencing into really lifting it from uh, a poorer country into a middle-income country, and that is very much the challenge facing PNG today. This event sits alongside a number of other initiatives that we have put in place to try and raise this pro the profile of PNG in our national discourse. Uh, earlier this year in April, we held uh, an academic symposium uh, around PNG. Uh, we're trying to convene a number of informal dinners between parliamentarians from the PNG Parliament um, and parliamentarians from here, and Scott Morrison, who's uh, here this evening, joined me in a dinner last year, which was actually done with Peter O'Neill, the now Prime Minister of, uh, of, of PNG. Uh, and of course, a little crusade of mine, which is to see that um, the Today Show, which is broadcast into uh, PNG on two stations every morning, given it has a significant viewership in uh, PNG, it'd be really nice if in the mornings they could tell us what the weather is in Port Moresby. Uh, so you can judge me on whether I'm able to achieve that in the next couple of years. 
But I do think that in trying to raise this profile, we're doing this from the basis of very fertile ground because there are under the surface such strong people to people links between uh, Australia and Papua New Guinea. From someone like Dame Carol Kidu, who's an Australian born uh, member of the Papua New Guinea Parliament, who's been such a leader and championing of women's rights, to Will Genya, who uh, a Papua New Guinean born doing wonderful things for the Wallabies in New Zealand right now, to the 24,000 uh, Papua New Guinean born residents of Australia, to the 12,000 Australians resident in PNG, to the tens of thousands of people who have, uh, Australians who have now walked the Kokoda Trail in the last 15 years, um, to the 170 PNG students who are studying in Australian universities today as a result of AusAid scholarships. Every one of those people is willing us to develop the very strongest relationship that we can between our two countries, a relationship which is not just befitting closest of neighbours, but a relationship which is befitting family. Uh, please enjoy your entree. We'll be back soon with the inaugural Independence Day oration from Sir Abhi Namayu. Thank you.